Hello, I'm Tim Sandal, BPL's um, site microbiologist, and I'm back with you with uh, another video looking at uh, this time uh, cleaning and disinfection points. Um, and this is always going to be an ongoing topic. There's always lots to say about this subject. Um, so regular cleaning and disinfection, along with other aspects of contamination control, is necessary for keeping the clean room within a state of compliance and also to meet the required standards. And the cleaning process must be designed specifically to remove microorganisms and particles. And that's instead of spreading them from one surface to another within the clean room. Now, the consequences of poor cleaning and disinfection are that if we don't clean and disinfect properly, this can lead to rejected batches. And even if we manage to rework a batch, this incurs costs and leads to reduced product yields. And, you know, even if we're not carrying out the task properly in the first place and we've got to go along and redo it, then this will uh, be uh, an excess waste of resources and lead to higher operating costs. So there's three areas I'd like to have a look at in the uh, short video. First is training, second is SOPs and the third is the use of cleaning contractors. So begin with training. With training, we need to ensure there's clear guidance in place to train new staff in GMP methods and to make sure we're adhering to standard operating procedures. And also that all the documentation that we're going to be used for tr uh, training people all fits into a, a good GMP system. Now, training in cleaning and disinfection cannot be a one time act. Activity. This is one of those areas where there needs to be periodic refresher training and this is to make sure everyone is working together to meet the highest possible standards. And training also mustn't be simply based around a checklist. Everyone who's engaged in cleaning and disinfection must understand the special purposes of clean rooms and the importance of what we're doing in terms of clean room operations and why we have strict cleaning protocols in place and how our core focus is on reducing contamination and that everyone understands the consequences of contamination, some of those risks to product that I previously mentioned. Now, my second area, SOPs. Now these needs, need, needs to follow in a stepwise uh, direction, stepwise instructions that logically flow. And this is what we sometimes refer to as scripts. And importantly, each type of room, be that a corridor is different to a filling room, for example, and each piece of equipment is going to be slightly different. So we're gonna need different scripts in place for different and we need to make sure that when we're putting scripts together, that the language is easy to follow, that we specify the right types of equipment and materials appropriate to the clean room grade, that we describe how we undertake cleaning and disinfection, how we prepare solutions, how these are stored, and what the expiry times are, and they're gonna differ from the bulk to how long a disinfectant could be in the bucket for. We need to make sure that the clean room mop heads, wipes and buckets are suitable and that mop heads and wipes are low particle shedding and that everything is also sterile. And we need to describe techniques and we've covered things like um, wipes in a previous video. We also need to make sure that every single horizontal and vertical surface is cleaned and disinfected as required. 
And we also need to make sure that the frequencies of cleaning and disinfection are clear and also that we never leave any waste cleaning products after we've completed the cleaning and disinfection session. So we're not leaving mop heads and wipes and buckets of solutions around that they're taken out of the area because they will soon turn into a source of contamination. We also need to get in our heads that cleaning is not only about the process area. This will be something that will begin with the lockers in which you're putting clothing as you're going into the clean rooms in the first place. And the cleaning and disinfection steps must follow the paths covered by personnel. And as well as the importance of processing rooms, we also need to pay particular attention to gowning areas because these are often the biggest uh, locations for cross contamination. My third and final point is about cleaning contractors. And here it's important where we do use cleaning contractors, as we do for a lot of lower grade cleaning rooms, is that the managers of the areas have been involved in selecting the contractors. And where we're using cleaning contractors, these people must have gone through training in GMP. And when we pick the cleaners, so it's not just a matter of going to the right company, we need to know and understand who the cleaners are, that we've evaluated their human resource and training requirements. And we need to be satisfied that they understand the basics of contamination control before they even set foot on site. We're not in the business of simply taking people straight off the street, to use a rather crude term, but straight into the production facility. And we certainly don't want people who've not worked in pharmaceutical areas before. And if we get the right cleaning contractors, then we need to make sure that they're part of the team and regarded as partners in joining with us to maintain the highest possible standards. Okay, so that's it for this video. I just want to get across some key points relating to clean rooms, cleaning and contamination control. And as always, I'll say to you, good luck with your shift and uh, have a good work session. So until next time, I've been Tim Sandal and I'll be back with you with another clean room related video. So goodbye. <laughs>